I think it's super important to, if you're starting a business product, selling something, um, get a good video. If you don't have to spend ten thousand, twenty thousand dollars on a video, get a free video. Send it, send a product to some people, make them like have them make you know user generated content, and then you run that, run that on Facebook. Um, scale, scale heavy if it, if you see it working. If you see the ad giving a little glimpse of light, spend more, spend more, spend more, and it'll, it'll do well. Um, if it doesn't, shut it off, and then try again. Mm-hmm. All right, I'm here with the one and only Gregory Mead. Greg Mead, thanks so much for being here, man. Thanks for having me, man. Appreciate it. Greg, you're the CEO of CrossNet Game, which is basically volleyball meets Foursquare. You're featured in Forbes 30 Under 30. You're a social media ninja. Your IG is Woe Is Mead. Your website is GregoryMead.com. Again, Greg, thanks a lot for being here, bro. Appreciate it, man. Let's just jump right in. I, you know, the whole idea of this project and my podcast is about inspired living. So what does inspired living mean to you? Uh, I would say inspired living is definitely just having freedom, you know, not even just financial freedom, but fr- freedom to just go out and do whatever you want every day um, and work for yourself. Yeah, I love that. I love that. Like time freedom, money freedom, you know, and the other reason why I wanted you on here, man, is because you know, this, this whole project is for athletes, coaches, and entrepreneurs. I'm personally an entrepreneur, but I'm really inspired by your story on how you created CrossNet. Uh, we were on that call. I think that was last week or two weeks ago um, with Kent Seaton. Shout out to Kent Seaton from Athletes Touch. But I was, I was hoping you could just kind of spend a little bit of time just sharing your story, um, how you created CrossNet, you know, just share some of that journey with us. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it started three and a half years ago um, in a small farm town called Woodstock, Connecticut. No one's ever heard of it, really. Uh, five minutes from Mass, from five minutes from an island. Um, grew up next to some cows. Um, but me and my buddies, we grew up playing sports, you know, being athletic and, and doing the, you know, the high school sports. We were good. We we're really good athletes. Um, but one day, uh, my partner, Mike, and really good high school buddy, called me up and he said, Hey, Greg, let's do something, you know? And he came over that day and we just literally just pounded out different ideas until we thought of CrossNet. And the next day we, we went to the store and we just rigged up two badminton nets, badminton <laughs> nets and like cut them up and like intertwine them and stuff. And it was a blast. We had friends over, we had like seven friends over and um, we had a really good time and we knew what we just did and we needed to make a product a prototype and bring it to market. I love it, man. I love it. I mean, as an entrepreneur, you know, like, you know, that old saying when you like throw throw a bunch of stuff at the wall and see what sticks, you know, like, I feel like that's kind of what you did. Um, but I know you were like, I, I know your story is basically you were in between two products. Can you can you talk about yeah. that? Yeah, yeah. Well, like, like I said, we were just pounding down different ideas. So we made a checklist of like, honestly, like 50 things on like this notepad. Me and Mike were just scribbling all night. Um, <laughs> some really stupid ones. Uh, but it was like between a wall charger speaker, like you plug into the wall and it's a speaker and it's a charger. I, I still love the idea. Um, <laughs> I haven't seen one yet. And then, um, or CrossNet. So, right. uh, but CrossNet came upon, upon is like, we, I was like, yo, let's do the next um, outdoor backyard sports game. Cause I, we grew up, we play, we play can jam. Like we love can jam. Um, I made some of my best friends playing can jam. So that always inspired me to do something like that. Something easy, something, you know, fun, get people outdoors. And Mike's like, oh, four square volleyball. So that's when we just like, went to Walmart the next day. And we're like, boom, let's do this. It's awesome, dude. Okay. Um, for my audience and for me, could you explain what can jam is by the way? Yeah. Oh, can jam is that black and yellow Frisbee game. Frisbee okay. disc game. You throw it into like a, it looks like a, a garbage can. Got and you. Uh, it's similar to Cornhole. It's just a Frisbee style. Got you. Got you. Okay, cool. All right. So you, you, you developed this cross net game, which is basically volleyball meets four square. Um, I believe this is kind of in the early stages of the pandemic. Or it was prior to the pandemic, or can you talk about the timeline there, like how how you started and like kind of where you get, uh, gained attraction? Yeah, yeah. Well, CrossFit started about three years ago, three and a half years ago. Um, took a year to prototype, make the prototype, get it to market, and then year one we started up pretty slow, did pretty did de- decent. It, we were content. Um, year two we blew up, like we went from seventy five thousand in sales to two million. Um, that's my best way to describe it because uh, I don't have. The, I don't have the units off the top of my head. Um, and that was great. That was amazing. We're like, wow, this is crazy. Um, and then the pandemic hit um, last year, mid, like March or whatever it was. And then we went from selling 10 units a day to 500 units a day. Uh, it was astronomically, like we were just blown out of the water. We were not ready for our inventory levels. We're just like 
done. We were shot. We had no inventory. Our customers were getting pissed off at us. Um, really, really great time, really bad time. Um, really hectic. Uh, we saw the money come in. We saw the customers getting mad. So it's like, at that point, we were like, okay, let's stop. Let's cut off the orders. Let's make sure our brand's, you know, safe. We make, we make the best brand possible. Man. And so like, so this past year, 2020, um, I actually, I actually want to hear more about that because that's when every, everything shut down, right? Like, like uh, my business even shut down, you know, cause we, you know, I, I have a beach volleyball club and they, they closed the beaches. Everything was, was stopped, but you guys seem to have figured out the social media game during that time and the online e-commerce game. And I, I actually reached out to Kent Seaton, um, who's a friend of mine. And I asked him for a quote about you. And, and he, this is what he said verbatim. He said, young entrepreneur who hit it right during COVID and he stayed true to himself. So I was, I was hoping you could, I was hoping that resonates with you. And if you could expand on like how you really hit it during the time when everyone was kind of just chilling and kind of panicking a little bit. Yeah. I mean, grateful we have a product in a, in a, in a sport and a game that people love and, and need to do, you know, especially when they're cooped up in their house. Um, in the beginning of the pandemic, it started off slow and then it really got like, it got real like midway through the summer. And people are like, holy crap, I'm just stuck at home. I can't do anything. So we had, we, we did some targeted ads on social media, Facebook. We scaled our Facebook ads like, like no other. I've never done it before. Ten, spent 10,000, 20,000 a day on Facebook ads, just, just hitting moms, hitting our target demos. And um, these people would just be, they would be purchasing CrossNet and then they'd be setting up in their backyard and they'd be playing CrossNet every day through the whole pandemic, through the whole summer. Um, and I'm sure they're going to do it this summer too, because they fell in love with it. Uh, but it definitely gave us a little, a little Kickstarter for, you know, making the year just crazy. Mm -hmm. um, and it's unfortunate that the pandemic happened, but it's fortunate for our business to, to boom off of it. And we helped a lot of families throughout it, which we've gotten emails, we've gotten cool messages being like, hey guys, thanks for not making my life really shitty um, during these times and bringing the family together. So it was cool. Right, right. And someone like me, someone else who's also in the outdoor exercise space, I think what you have, you could probably agree with this. What I realized during the pandemic is the value of outdoor education or, or outdoor exercise, I should say, went up, right? 100%, 100%. Like even myself, like I go play basketball and stuff um, for fun. That's what I do for fun. I play with my brother, my, my partner and all my friends over here. And I remember they were, they were taking the nets off the hoop yep. <laughs> and I couldn't play anymore. So I was like, wow, okay. Like this is, this is a serious problem. So yeah, it, it's super important to get out throughout the day and like mental health. Um, if you're, if I'm working all day, I have meetings from 8am to 5pm. And after that, I need to go out and do something. I have to, and that goes for anyone, whatever they're doing at school or uh, their, their work job, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Well, since you mentioned mental toughness, let's actually talk about that um, from a general standpoint um, as an entrepreneur, because like I said, I'm an entrepreneur, but it took me, a, took me some time to kind of develop the skills and, and hone the, the mindset that it takes to be an entrepreneur. Can you touch on that a little bit? I mean, you're, you're much younger than me, but you seem to have figured it out. Um, and just, just kind of touch on like what it really takes mentally to become a successful entrepreneur. Yeah. I mean, we all, everyone has different backgrounds. You can come from money, come from that. But like me, I, I grew up struggling um, with my family. So like I knew I had to get money somehow. So I knew that hustle, I had to hustle. I, I, you know, hit a spark and I just really had to turn it on. Um, but as an entrepreneur, you can't like, can't stop and you can't take a day off. Like you're going to set yourself back and you got to work on the weekends. You got to grind around the clock. And then eventually you can, you know, hopefully you have a team under you one day and you can, you know, ease out of that 24 seven, grind mode and, and focus on yourself. But yeah, you got to struggle, you got to sacrifice and you got to be willing to, to spend your money and put your all into it. Love that. Um, aside from the money, cause the money's great, but aside from the money, what's, what's the best part of being an entrepreneur and a successful entrepreneur? Yeah. I mean, I think it goes back to your previous question. It's like having freedom is super important. Like, so don't focus on the money at the end game. Like if you're making something, if you're making a product, a sport, a podcast, whatever you're doing and you're putting your all into it, it's going to pay the bills at the end of the day. Like it's going to, as long as you, you create something. Yeah. Yeah. Create something and solve a problem. And, and you know what I like to say too, like, I think the main goal at the very, very top, and please agree or disagree with this, but I think the main goal at the top of everything that you do should be a trickle down from time freedom and money freedom. Those yep. two things, like as entrepreneurs, those are, that's what we want, right? Absolutely, 100%. Yeah, and like, you know, 
what again what i'm inspired by you is because you created a product that can move by itself and i wanted you to just kind of go into let's go back to the cross net game now the, the specifics of it could you talk specifics in terms of learning lessons or pain points from the um from from like creating the idea of the product to the actual production to the point of sale like all of that can you connect the dots there i know it's kind of a long weird question yeah. but um, so I'll start with the production. The production is a living hell when we started it and it goes for <laughs> any product of, you know, this size and complications and pieces. Um, it took a year to develop. Um, we'd get samples in th two months, three months, it would suck. So we had to send it back, wait two months and then, all right, it'd be a little better. And then two months later we get it back and be like, okay, it's good, but we're missing this. And then we had to wait another three months. So that process is really annoying and we still go through it we're still making our product better we're making new products um but we learn from that and then once we have the product um what like with a with a cool thing like ours is like once we set it up at the beach it's all eyes on the game people walk by it, people film it people come up and ask stuff like i remember the first time we ever took our main prototype to the beach in rhode island um we were going to just to play just the four of us uh me mike and chris are our founders and um, one of our best friends and we were just going to play just going to play to have fun a good time with our game and we didn't end up playing because 25 kids teenagers came up and said hey can i play and started waiting in line like og four square and <laughs> at that at that point we we're like holy crap we just did this like we're we're doing this like it's crazy and then you'll really see so like in the beginning um, yeah, we did cool marketing. We did Twitter ads, we did Facebook and those helped for sure. But like when we started small, we noticed like when we went to a beach in Miami, we go for two days, three days straight. We realized like out of the 50 sales we got that month, 18 of them would be from Miami. And it's like, okay, it's cause we played in the beach and people were taking photos and playing with us. Right. So it's cool. It's snowball effect. You see. Yeah. Super cool. It's so funny, man. When I was like researching you and the game and I actually had Ryan Millar on, uh, in a previous, um, previous episode, which he runs the CrossNet podcast yeah. for you guys. Yeah. Um, and he's awesome. Shout out to Ryan Millar, gold, Olympic gold medalist. Yep. But I was, you know, when I was thinking about this, I was actually remembering my experience in elementary school on the four square court. And I was, I was, I was the king, dude. I love that game. You know, I love holding like, you, like, I don't know if people remember, but you like started this square and then you try to work your way to the, all the way around. And I loved it. Um, but it was missing that it like, athletic explosive aspect that you get with basketball or volleyball or, you know, or, or other sports that you can explode mm -hmm. with. So then when you, th th then when I was thinking about if you, you know, raise the net and like make the game higher, it actually adds this super cool dynamic. And um, I'm going to, I'm just going to open up to you right now at first, at first, and you've, you've actually admitted this in another podcast I listened to, but as a, as a former pro slash semi-pro volley beach volleyball player i was resistant to it man because i was like why would i play that when i could just go play vo beach volleyball you know and i and yeah. i and i'm i want to express that because i think a lot of people in my boat might have that similar thought but i want to also say this if you think about what you guys have created in a bigger way in an entrepreneurial type of way it's genius because you you connected the relationship point the relative point the re relatability point is what I'm trying to say. So now what you have is you don't have, if people don't have access to the beach, which is most people in the United States, you know, they can still play because now you can set this cross net, cross net game up in someone's backyard in the grass. I love that from an entrepreneur standpoint, because now you just opened up your whole market to not just volleyball or beach volleyball, but you made it relatable to someone who remembers Foursquare, but also wants to like jump you know? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So I, I think there's two things off of that. So yeah, going back to your first point is like volleyball players didn't appreciate it and don't appreciate it at first, if, mm -hmm. unless they know about it and they see it um, or they see their favorite, you know, pro volleyball athletes playing. So like right now we got Katie, Casey Patterson, Triborn, Crabs, uh, Kame, all these guys like Sam Pedlow, just like super cool pro volleyball players. And they're making dope videos on it and they're playing our doubles version, which they get a lot of touches. So it's like, if you ask me, why would I play cross net? And my answer to you would be, um, well, first off, you've been playing volleyball your whole life. So switch it up, man. Switch it up. Yeah, yeah. And then, <laughs> um, and, and you're going to get so many more touches in playing in a quick rally. Obviously it might not be as fun for us volleyball as at the end of the day for you, but, um, it's a good segment. So leading into my next point is, um, we're really in, we're in like 10,000 classrooms right now, physical education classrooms. 
and we're wow. segment we're, we're really working our way into yeah we want to make our own sport out of it but we're really helping the volleyball community too i didn't realize this going into making this product um because i didn't grow up playing volleyball either um but we're giving kids in classrooms the touches before they get on the big court because when you when you're playing volleyball in gym class you're playing six on six or they're the gym teacher will make it 10 on 10, whatever it is. And mm-hmm. no one, t- you, some people don't even touch the ball, but athletic, right. unathletic person um, that's shy is not going to touch the ball. And the athletic kid's going to run over and go in their spot and steal it. Um, yeah, so with true. cross net, everyone's going to get touches and get comfortable with it coming with the ball coming at their face, you know, 20 times in a minute. So yeah. it, go, it leads into volleyball and it's really cool that I'm able to see that and, you know, make that happen too. Absolutely, dude. I, I mean, I commend you for seeing that. The other point I wanted to kind of accentuate and highlight is the fact that it's one of the only sports I could think of. And I, again, I heard you say this in that call a couple of weeks ago that you could have an 80, 85 year old and a six year old play together and still have fun. Exactly. Yeah. That's, right? that's a huge, that's a huge market for us. Right. Um, I think it's bigger than any sport out there almost. I mean, sure. You could do cornhole and stuff, but like any athletic sport out there, I try to name me one that you can play with an 80 year old and a five year old and a 20 year old and a 50 year old in one sport and, and have be, it be good yeah. and be, and have it be competitive and fun. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that's to me, like that's, that's genius. And, and the word that I wrote down for you is uh, ingenuity because you guys like you, could you go back to that point? I know you mentioned it a, a, a little bit, but to anyone listening here who might be inspired to like really create something out of thin air, like, could you just go back to that, that moment where you're like four square volleyball, <laughs> like, or like where'd that come from dude yeah i mean that that's a good question and it's it's almost like as cliche as it is it's like if you know you know like it, once <laughs> you have something you have it it's like if i'm hiring a good employee like i know that's the employee i want to hire on that interview so it's similar to a product development it's like okay if i was ever hesitant on anything i'm about to make i probably shouldn't do it you'd have to go into it with your the utmost confidence you know possible and and make sure like you love what you're doing. You're about to go do, or you're just going to be miserable and you're going to probably fail at what you do. Okay. No, I agree with all that, but I I actually want you to go back a little bit more. Like, okay. Okay. Are you like sitting around like with a a paper and like a pen? Paper and pen. Yeah. Really? Jotting down ideas. Usually that doesn't work like that. And I've never heard stories like that at all. Yeah. But this, this was an intentional thing. Mike called me up and um, he was an engineer, like I said, in the beginning. And uh, he, he didn't want to, you know, go out and, work a nine to five building robots or whatever he was going to do. And he called me up. He said, Greg, let's, I want to make something with you. Um, Cause I know you have this background of social media expertise and hmm. I think we could do something together. Um, and I said, come over. And he did. And w- it was an intentional thing. We were going to make a product, whether it was CrossNet or the wall charger speaker or a, a t-shirt company, we were going to do something that night and um, very fortunate. This beautiful thing came out of it. Yeah, man. I mean, so, so now let's talk a little bit about the, the future. So I know you guys just partnered uh, recently with Wilson, right? Mm-hmm. H- how's that partnership working out for you guys? It's great. It's, it's really cool. It gives us that credibility too, definitely to the volleyball community. Um, yeah. That, you know, we're, that. we're exactly, that's the ball, but might right not be there. the real one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, yeah, it, it's really cool. And we want to, you know, utilize it and, and keep working off of that relationship and building it. And then obviously it helps us get into other, you know, make special relationships with other brands. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, in terms of a pain point that you're solving, I'll tell you a quick pain point that I think there's a huge uh, room for growth for you guys. There's a lot of people in, in my community, in my world, which is beach volleyball, that are so they love the sport so much that some parents actually are building courts in their backyard because they don't want to maybe drive to the beach all the time, or maybe they don't have access to the beach, right? Maybe they live too far. So they're actually spending the time and effort to make actual courts in their backyard. But I think CrossNet kind of solves that problem on a cost-effective kind of standpoint and space standpoint. Yeah, you know? absolutely. Yeah, yeah, that's that's a good, I haven't really discussed that, honestly. Um Cause I'm not, I'm out of touch with the volleyball community. Like as much as I want to be, you know, you're more involved in it cause that's the sport you grew up playing. Um, but yeah, that, that's really cool to hear as well. Um, but yeah, it definitely does. You could just set it up in your backyard. You could take it down. You can leave it up permanent. It, it's weather resistant. Um, and we also have two different models, which is the, the singles version and the doubles version. So whatever you want to play, you can leave up. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's so cool. And and so I, I know you just mentioned some of those names that are now playing the sport. You know, but I know those guys too. Some of those guys have, have been on this podcast too. Um, what's their what's been their reaction to everything? Yeah, I think it started off slow. Um, just to be honest, like Ryan yeah. Millar was our first guy, um, really showing love. And then we had Kame in the beginning. He, he we sent him a net and he made a cool video for us. Um, and then Sam Pedlo. And then it's kind of like a, a snowball effect, like whether it's selling the product, but it's like these guys see each other playing and their, their peers playing together. And it's amazing. Cause like once they come together and play it, it's, it's a special thing that happens and like really cool rallies. Like I, I thought it was yeah, like yeah. one of the coolest things I've ever seen. Uh, like For sure. Playing, playing with them. I got my ass beat, but it was fun. There's a, I don't know if you're familiar, but I know um, if, if you talk to Taylor and Trevor Crab, there's a, there's a baby court in Hawaii called the baby court at Outrigger canoe club. And a lot of those guys grew up on that baby court. It's basically like a really small net, uh, small court. And you you basically grow up, those guys, Taylor specifically, grew up playing full speed volleyball on this baby court. And it made him kind of in the who the who he is today. He's like the uh, USA number one player right now. Um, yeah. What CrossNet could do is it, that could do it, it could do that for many different kinds of players. And I want you to be able to see that, like not just a, a, a gifted guy like Taylor Crabb, but uh, boys, girls, men, women, like it's, it, that's why I was so interested in it because I saw it. I was like, oh my God, actually, this actually opens up the game, you know? Yeah, that's, absolutely. That's cool. Yeah. I definitely want you to try the doubles net too. Like when get a, get a yeah. partner and get, get good, good other people playing, not like me and my brother, like get good <laughs> volleyball players and play with them, play with eight good people. You'll have a hell of a time. I, I will do I will do that. Um, a couple other ideas that I had too that I wanted to just run by you. I have I have friends who are athletic directors at private schools. I think you should get into the private school sector because this is a perfect sport for like like everything we just talked about, right? Like if you can't just if you can't necessarily play volleyball because you know because all those reasons you listed, but this is something fun that you could you don't even need to get warm. You don't even have to do a warm up. You could just go play. And so it opens up this this realm for maybe kids who aren't so athletic, but they still need that outdoor experience. Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. Um, I've been there. I've, I've seen the. I've been to the gym classes just like you have growing up. Yeah. Um, the unathletic kids, you know, might be shyer or tend to sit in the sidelines. But if you're getting touches and like you're, you have to do something when it's coming at you, or like you're not going to play. So, but it, yeah, it's definitely cool. And I would love to get into the private schools. Um, shoot me over the connect after <laughs> I, I will. I definitely will because they have the budget for it. Right. Like they have yeah. to spend that budget and they have, they're, they're constantly seeking for, for equitable activities. Right. Yeah, absolutely. They, they need new stuff. Um, goes for anything, any store um, retailer, uh, you need new stuff and you need to evolve with, you know, what's coming out and CrossNet will be huge in, in schools you know, for years to come. I'm super yeah. confident in that. Yeah. And then just a, a couple other ideas and then we can, we can wrap it up a little bit, but um, the other idea I had for you, and I want to get your your opinion on this. I think this is a really cool celebrity game. You could get celebrities to do little tournaments and not just celebrities, but like like other professional athletes. Right. Like I could see like NFL players like going for it and stuff and and even tennis players. And it's just kind of a fun social dynamic that you could do with with all kinds of different athletes and celebrities. Does, does that resonate? Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. We've already we've already had these discussions internally. Like we we think of yeah. everything. Um, it's just yeah. like when can we do it and how and how long sure. will it take to actually get it done? But yeah, celebrity tournaments is definitely on the radar. Um, but we have to set up regular tournaments first. You sure. know what I'm saying? Sure. And and start monetizing those and getting those in place. And then a celebrity tournament will come in. Hundred percent. I see a celebrity doubles match coming up by end of the year, hopefully. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, and then I know you've spoken about this before but talk a little bit about the correlation uh with spike ball and not necessarily the sport of spike ball but what i see for you guys is the the same way spike ball does all these tournaments all over the country because they actually do massive tournaments i don't know if you've seen them you probably have yeah yeah so can you talk about the correlation between um what what could be for crossnet in terms of maybe following spike ball's model yeah, I mean, it, it, whether it's following or not, we definitely need to get down that road, route and uh, turn cross it into a legit sport. So whether that's setting up major tournaments in certain locations and having 300 people come out and everyone pays a fee to enter and then they win a big grand prize similar to like AVP in, in volleyball. Um, we really want to bring that to people and, and offer prizes and get good content. It's a win-win for everyone because they're getting out, chance to win money. 
and it's we're turning it to a, a lucrative sport, which is amazing. Yeah, no, it really is, man. I, it really is. I think the main hurdle, like for for the volleyball players, is to like just look past, you know, like that initial thing of like, oh, maybe we should just play volleyball instead, you know. Look past that and 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 kind of get to all these points that we're, we just discussed, right? Which is all these benefits, you know. And I I, I think for volleyball players it's kind of an easy challenge because it's, we can look past that stuff. It's, it's more of the ego thing, get the ego out of the way. Right. I think you experienced that. I think you mentioned that before, right? hundred percent. Yeah. Like when we first went to a, we went to a, I'm not sure. I don't think it was ABP like three years ago. We were really young and um, young in CrossNet. And uh, we went to a, a volleyball tournament and like, it seemed like everyone had egos at the volleyball yeah. place. And we yeah. were just like, we were like, damn, like, all right, maybe volleyball is not the people we should be targeting. Yeah. <laughs> um, but then, then we started getting, you know, respect. We got into some wholesalers, retailers, we got, some, we got a big name buzz on the internet and um, we gave it to some pros and, and they made good content. And then the other pros saw other volleyball people saw in the uh, snowball effect, like I keep saying, but it, it's, it goes a long way once you see Casey Patterson playing with his kids, you know? Right. Right. And, and just, I know we touched on it, but just going back to the social media game, I mean, like, do you have any little nuggets for, for someone like me, who's a content creator or someone listening, who's my, who might be like, man, like, how did they just, how did they just infiltrate? Like, like my, my feed, like, <laughs> like I feel, I see the, I, when, when uh, you guys came out, I first saw the cross net over and over and over and over again. It was like, it was kind of smart. You just got in my head with it, you know? Yeah, exactly. I mean, I think it's super important to, if you're starting a business product, selling something, um, get a good video. If you don't have to spend 10,000, $20,000 on a video, get a free video, send it, send a product to some people, make them like have them make, you know, user, user generated content. And then you run that, run that on Facebook, um, scale, scale heavy. If, it, if you see it working, if you see the ad giving a little glimpse of light, spend more, spend more, spend more, and it'll, it'll do well. Um, if it doesn't shut it off and then try again. Mm -hmm. um, but at, moving forward in the social media world, it's like, I wish I was more involved now, but I'm doing, you know, bigger picture stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but TikTok is huge. So like, Definitely take advantage of TikTok this year. Don't sleep on that or you're going to regret it. And uh, all the businesses that do, you know, sleep on TikTok, they're going to regret it. So I'm going to keep preaching that. And um, especially for my team, like TikTok, 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 it's going to be. Can, can you, uh, dude, can you just expand on that a little bit for people who don't quite get the power of TikTok? Because I just, I, I recently just got it. Like at first I was like, oh man, these are just silly videos you know but just just expand on it for businesses like how, yeah. How, yeah how can we win as a business on there yeah so like in, instagram is dying organic like the the feed on instagram is terrible now like you can't just post and it goes viral anymore it doesn't work like that they changed the algorithm they made it way more difficult for influencers and businesses so transitioning to tiktok is really cool to see because like if you go to crossnet's feed the last four posts we did we got like eight thousand views 20,000 views, 8,000 views. And then one did like 300,000 views, right? In like in 24 hour span, like the 8,000 is not that good, but the 300,000, if I wanted to pay for that on Instagram, I'd be looking at like $5,000 probably. So, so it's free. Yeah. It's all free and it's good, you know, muscle memory um, for people that are seeing it. And like the TikTok is like where our market's at. Essentially it's like the kids see it and then they, hopefully they go ask their mom to go buy it or they have money to go buy it themselves. Sure. No, that makes sense. Um, before I let you go, um, can you, can you just say any other platforms that you're looking at? Like, are you guys on clubhouse? Are you talking about this on clubhouse or, or maybe any other platforms like LinkedIn or things that I don't know about? Yeah. Well, I mean, me and my brother are pretty uh, Chris is huge on LinkedIn. Um, and I'm getting there too, but LinkedIn's been amazing for our business. We can post anything, everyone at any time of the day will respond and help us out. Um, LinkedIn's huge to grow your personal brand and with your, with your business. I think that's really important when it comes to social media. Uh, I, I learned that. I wish I learned that years ago uh, instead of rather just growing the business, I should have been growing my personal brand and my business. So I messed up and I really see that now. So I'm that's really key, bro. That. Yeah, that's key. key. Huge. It's huge. Cause people want to know my story. People want to know my partner's stories and where we came from and, and how we got to where we are. And, you know, it's cool seeing 20 year olds make, cool basket sport you know so like we have to really get in front of people this year and that's what we're really honing in on so linkedin yeah we try to jump on clubhouse i'm not the hugest fan but i'm working on it <laughs> yeah i just got off of a, a clubhouse room uh prior to this it's very powerful man i I, yeah. I think i think we could do a whole nother topic uh, just on that but um cool man dude thank you so much for spending some time um with me today how can people find you and where can they buy crossnet 
yeah, uh, you can buy CrossNet at crossnetgame.com or walk in the dicks, walk in the Walmart soon. Um, you'll see it there on the sporting goods shelves. You can contact me on LinkedIn, uh, Gregory Mead, Instagram, what was Mead? I love it, man. Hey, Greg, you're an inspiration to me and uh, hopefully anyone out there who has an idea, you know, grab a piece of paper and a pen just like Greg did and just jot it out, write it out. So thank you so much, bro. I really appreciate you. I, I wish you continued success and I, uh, you, I will, I will be a part of your journey. <laughs> cool. Appreciate it, man. All right, brother. All right. Later. Bye. This episode is brought to you by DAF Global. If you're looking to start a podcast or you have a podcast and you're looking for editing services, hit up my guys, Oliver and Garrett at DAF Global. They're awesome. They help me with this podcast and they take care of all kinds of different services like editing and audio enhancement. And they're great to work with. They're also offering a 10% discount to all within the game listeners. So hit my guys up at DAF Global on Instagram and also on their website, www.dafglobal.co.uk.